1 John chapter 2, are we there? Verse 1, my little children, these things write I to you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. That is beautiful, isn't it? Now, if you look and investigate chapter 1, verse 5 going down, this, is, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That doesn't mean he doesn't dwell in the darkness at times. That's a little nugget. We'll leave that alone. Some of y'all like blasphemy. Oh, go ahead and look it up. Well, look at this. And if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light, listen, as he is in the light and have fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You hear that word? If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. The key words we want to focus on is righteousness, okay, and unrighteousness. And then, of course, we're going to focus on the word advocate. Y'all ready? Stay strong, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. It's all worth it. Just hold on. Endure. Amen? Righteous in the Hebrew. Sadiq. It means just, lawful. I can't. First off, let's just have the talk again, shall we? Revelations of Jesus Christ is the name of the ministry. So who do you think is the righteousness of God, literally? Jesus Let's go to baptisms. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Somehow they got some super seats over there. <laughs> I thought Benjamin was going to come sit right down right there. He's famous for it. Literally, uh, it's, it's amazing. Hey. <laughs> well, you're in the opposite. You're in the back. So, righteous. Just, lawful, righteous. In government, in one's cause, in conduct, in character. As justified and vindicated by God. And correct. Those are the definitions of righteous in Hebrew. Now in the Greek, righteous, Greek is dikaios. Righteous is spoken 41 times. Just is mentioned 33 times. Interesting. Right is mentioned five times. Meet. So righteous can mean righteous, just like have nothing to do with that just man. Oh, come on, y'all. Right? Right or meet, it means righteous. The arm of the righteous, you see? Now, number two in the Greek of righteous also means, pay attention now, observing divine laws, virtuous, keeping the commands of God. Of those, now listen to this part of the definition. Those who seem themselves to be righteous, who pride themselves to be righteous in their virtues, whether real or imagined. That's where you get self-righteousness from, right? You get people that will learn the Hebrew name of Jesus and now they've lifted themselves about, above anyone else who doesn't use the Hebrew name of Jesus. You have those in religious uh, churches that they'll put on a suit and if you come in with a t-shirt and Tim's, immediately you're a sinner to them. These are people that are self-righteous, you see? So there's another form of a righteous where they think they're righteous, but they're not. 
Another definition in the Greek. Listen to this, kid. This is amazing. Amazing. Innocent, faultless, guiltless. I mean, are you not seeing Jesus Christ? Yeah. <laughs> How amazing is this? Another definition used of him whose ways of thinking, feeling, acting is wholly, entirely conformed to the will of God and who therefore needs no ratification in heart and life. Now pause right there before we keep going. Like you, you do know there is absolutely nobody can that, that can fit that definition perfectly except Christ. This means that one can be righteous in a season or do a righteous act and God acknowledges it. But as far as righteousness itself, the Bible says there's none. I think I just went too far ahead. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. Okay. So now... We're not going to go into the definition of advocate yet. We're going to remain in this whole journey of righteous in righteousness. Amen? Amen? Now, let's break this down, shall we? Ecclesiastes 7.20. Do you mind if we paraphrase to make sure we get this word done? You write them down, though. It says there is not a righteous man on the earth. That's in Ecclesiastes 7.20. I'm going to go to Romans real quick because I'm near it. Chapter 3, you write it down, verse 10. Look at what it says. It says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Yes or no? I also want you to write down Isaiah 64, verse 6. And then I also want you to write down Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, that clearly says, no man is justified by the law. Oh, this is so good. So if there's not one righteous on the earth... That means technically nobody can be called righteous to the extent of perfectly. That means that we have to go on a journey. How many of y'all want to go on a school trip? Yeah. Getting the yellow buds, remember back in the day? That was so exciting. You ever have the day where the teacher just wheels all oh, me? How old are some of y'all? I'm 40. Remember the teacher wheeled in the big old Bertha TV? Yeah. You're like, no, a movie? Yes! You were all excited. Field trips were amazing until your mama was so broke she didn't give you no lunch money. Everybody was eating on the trip. you just like... <laughs> we about to go on a, a spiritual school trip. We're going to search through the scriptures to see if we can find Jesus. Amen. Are y'all ready? Yes. Well, hold on. We ain't ready yet. We got to, I got to get the bus over. We got to load it up and get the chaperone and all that. Before we get there, let's talk about some other meanings of righteous. What if I told you in Romans chapter 7 verse 12, it says that the, all right, let's just go there. Seven, I got to paraphrase a lot of them, but I can't all of them. We're going to have to read some of them now. Verse 12, I'm reading. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandments holy and just and good. Remember that word just is the same word in the Greek for righteous. You know, there's some Christians, they look at the law like it's an enemy. They lack understanding. They lack knowledge. The law is holy. The law is just and righteous. But if you submit to the law, you become a debtor to do the whole law. And there's nobody that can and ever will fulfill the law other than Jesus Christ. And we're going to get to the bottom of why. 
And no, you can't give the easy. Well, it's because he's God. That's the easy way. We could just close the book. Don't you want to go into the details? When my wife makes an amazing Kenyan dish that so many of you are missing out on, no offense. I'm like, wait a minute, girl. What is in this beef stew? Just, is that turmeric? Cinnamon? I want to get into the fine detail of the meal. You go ahead and order a bland burger if you want. I want the detail. I want to know the seasonings in this message. You're like, I do too, if you would just stop talking and get back to the message. You'd be keeping us. So, the law is righteous. Mm. There's a conundrum, though. There's a real issue. Brother, there is an issue that we need to talk about. Sisters, the Lord said something that just will deflate you if you don't have this revelation. Matthew chapter 5, let's read it real quick. Let's see if you guys can beat me there. When you get there, say hallelujah. Oh, hold on. How? You must have been just there. <laughs> oh, I see the light blinging off your glasses. You got the Bible app. Matthew 5. I'm there. You need to know what it means to get a biblical paper cut in your life. Yeah, cheaters. Matthew 5. Y'all ready? 20. Okay, we ready? Let me get there. For I say to you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right there, I remember the first time I ever read that. Man, I was, I was enjoying the day. I was all excited in the Lord. And I read that verse, I'm like, how? These Pharisees studied the law. They, Paul called himself blameless concerning the law. Not that he was perfect, but he was proving a point. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, he said. How are we going to do that? No, Jesus wanted you to deflate. He wanted you to feel that way. Are you all hearing this? He wanted you to know you can't do it. Because he wanted you to hit the roadblock and detour to him. Oh, that's good. Glory to God. He wanted you in your self-righteous, high-minded, learning Hebrew to hit the roadblock. And be like, I can't do this law. Because the Bible says there's a curse that falls on somebody if they commit to do the law and don't continue in the law. Amen. The fun part is when you find people that are bound to the law and you start just pulling out all 600 laws on them. I'll keep the fringes, brother, on the shirt. Bro, you got like four different fabrics on. You broke the law. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I got to find me something at the store. The lady at the register had her period. You were supposed to stay away from her for like eight days. You broke the law. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it goes deep. You know what? We need to talk over a cheeseburger. You just put milk with meat. You broke the law. <laughs> Father, forgive me. I've done broke that law <laughs> so many times. Have you not had a steak and cheese? Some of y'all ain't from the Northeast. No offense, Texas. Y'all don't know how to do a steak and cheese with your little, little wannabe little steak shops. You go to the Northeast. You go to Boston, Worcester, New York, and New Jersey. They got the pizza. They got the steak and cheeses. Y'all clapping a little too loud. I mean, just <laughs> well said. You can't have cheese on your meat. 
You broke the law. This is why Jesus is our right. Look at all you like, you're going to be in the diner tonight. Just, oh, Lord, you are just my righteousness. Just <laughs> thank you, Lord. Now, that don't mean you shouldn't keep the Lord's commands. It's not a game, but you don't bind yourself to the law. You see the difference? I don't want to do it, but there's a message that I, I was able to preach it very briefly to a crowd of about 30 after the Louisville conference. People that just happened to find where my wife and I were. <laughs> and the lobby was big. It ended up being a fellowship. And we talked about the Ten Commandments and how really with the Antichrist behind the scenes, it's about obeying his laws. I don't want to do that. We're going to leave that alone. But wait a minute. So Lord, thank you because I'm not going to be able to exceed the righteousness of Pharisees. I need to put my trust in your righteousness. Oh, isn't that beautiful? But what's so good about the Lord is he doesn't give you a pass. He doesn't allow you to have his righteousness so you could just be reckless and do anything and everything you want. But the law is unforgiving. You know, there was a preacher one time, broke it down so well. So well. And Paul himself broke it down so well. Just 30 seconds, I got to break it down so you see it. Picture the law as a husband and Jesus as a, a man you want to marry. Fellas, spiritually. Right? I'm being, I don't, because some people are new in the Lord, they don't get what I mean. We are called the bride of Christ for anybody that's a, a baby in the Lord. Doesn't mean you're a woman, brothers. It just means you're spiritually the wife of Jesus Christ, soon to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Picture, picture you, uh, let me say it like this. Picture a woman married to a husband. He's perfect as far as his cleansliness. Everything he does is just spectacular. But he's miserable to live with because he's not merciful to you. If you do something wrong, he holds it against you for the rest of your life. He holds a record of your wrong. His expectation is way too high for you. He always expects you to do something that's so hard for you to do. And when you're not able to do it, he rubs it in your face. But yet, this other person named Jesus comes along he's perfect but the difference between him and this husband called the law is he actually helps his wife if the wife falls he'll go what are you doing you're not supposed to do that but let me help you up I forgive you let's walk together where is this and the problem is the woman wants to leave this husband to be with this husband but she can't because then she'll be an adulteress. The only way she can leave this husband is if he dies. Then she could remarry. But the problem is this husband is healthy, young, and he ain't going nowhere for a long time. So get it out your mind. I know, what was that move? Like, look like I'm in a pool. I'm clowning. I'm allowed to be, you know, it keeps me awake. Check this out. So there's no way she can marry this other man named Jesus who's a far greater husband because he's compassionate. He expects the best, but he helps her be the best. Woo! So she's like, he ain't gonna die. Ah, wait a minute. There's a way out. I gotta die. If I die, then the marriage contract breaks. Then I can marry him. So I die to the flesh. I die to my will. I die to the world. Now I can leave the law and marry Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? 
And what's so sad is you get people that naturally want to be righteous, but they end up self-righteous. So they get bewitched by YouTubers online. They change their name to you who ha ha ha. They start wearing long gowns. Now there's nothing wrong with that to wear it like different sackcloth when it's lead. I'm proving a point. Theirs is for show. We got soldiers here that wear amazing like Hebrew attire and I love it. Sackcloth. But the point is, they start learning Hebrew, they end up back to the law. It usually starts when they reject the name of Jesus Christ. And even in the midst of the Hebrew groups, they fight over the name. One says Yahushua, one says Yahawashai, one says Yeshaya, one says Yeshua, one says Yahushua. And it goes on and on. And they're all beefing over the name while we're casting out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But don't get it twisted. When I'm in, I'm in my secret place, I will say Yeshua. I will say Emmanuel. It's not that we discard. I would want to know his original name. But if somebody gets shot and they're bleeding out and they happen to call on Jesus Christ, they're going to be saved as they bleed out. Thank you, Lord. So now that we dealt with that and you see the importance of this, now you know that the law is not evil, it's righteous. It's God's law. Oh, but, oh, oh, I don't want to do it. Oh, let me just say it, Lord. I, I've been messing up lately with the Lord with this. I just blurt stuff out. Just, don't go to a, a, a qualified movie with me. I'll be like, this is what's about to happen. <laughs> right? What did we just talk about in the other message? He's the promise of God, which means there's many promises, but he's the promise. There's many things of righteousness. The law is righteous, but Jesus is righteousness alive. Imagine that he's living righteousness. He's righteousness put into a body. Righteousness walking around. Oh, come on, y'all. That way, look at how good it pleases the Father. This should have been at the end, Lord. Sorry, Father. God the Father is so pleased he puts up this thing called the law which nobody can fulfill and it's perfectly righteous and he sends his son to conquer it. <laughs> Glory to Christ! Glory to Christ! Come on! Glory to Christ! Glory to Christ! Glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to Christ! How awesome is that? Now when you see it like that, you see how disrespectful it is to go back to the law when the righteousness of God itself, himself, fulfilled the law because we never can. We fulfill through him. Oh wait, wait, are you catching this? I went last night, I had to go to the front desk. I wanted to see the ballroom. I wanted to make sure things was in decency and order. But the doors were locked, brothers and sisters. The only way I can enter in is through someone that works for the company. He had a key that I did not have. And I went to him to get here. I could never enter into the room of fulfilling the law. So I go to the front desk of God the Father and say, Jesus, can you open the door for me? Because I can't. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let me tell you why you never glorify a man that preaches well. He can't do it on his own. It has to be Christ. If you think my mind could think of an analogy that quick, that sharp, and remember last night, correlated to this message. Do I look in the mirror and practice, family? No, hey, no. Yeah, right. I'm walking around like... Just go, you know what I mean? I don't know what to do. I'm going to go pray. I trust in the Lord. I trust in Him. I'm not worried. I love that test of just getting on a stage and going, Lord, you got this. I got my footnotes. You preach. I don't want to write a whole sermon down. Write footnotes and let God shepherd you as you preach. We're not going to get into that. But the point is, what an analogy. Perfect way to see how much we need his righteousness. Now, okay, 
do me a favor. We're going to go through them. We're going to paraphrase a lot of them because of the time. What, let me, what time is it? Somebody tell me. Huh? Wait, it's only seven. Okay, so, oh, yeah, we got an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, we got to paraphrase. Okay, wait, pause. Matthew chapter 27, we got to read. We got to honor the Lord with this one. You ready? Verse 19, I'm reading it. 27, 19. When he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. That word there is righteous. Did you know that? Zadik. You see? So, it was a warning. Don't have nothing to do with that just man. That's why I'm telling you, it is dangerous to get involved with slander. It is dangerous to get involved with just crowd stuff. Because if you're wrong about a true servant of the Lord, there's a great, you got to answer to that. Chill out, go pray to the Lord before you just join a crowd. But notice, it was a warning. Don't have anything to do with doing evil to this righteous man, right? Right? All right, go to Acts 22. Acts 22. Let's go. Fourteen, we're going to read it quick. And he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know what, know his will, and see that just one. That means the righteous one. Notice that's a capital O. Oh, y'all better catch this. And should hear the voice of his mouth. Wait a minute, what? The divine righteousness of God. Manifested in the flesh. Righteousness itself speaking to us audibly. As he walked the earth 30 years or so. 33 however long, right? 33? Approximately. Look at this. Now go to Acts chapter thir uh, 3. Quickly. Acts chapter 3. You know what, not, not to like get off topic, but you know what I love about children? It lets you know how many times we cry to the Father about nothing. You be thinking something's wrong. And someone just took his little car. He's just like, ah! You're like, what is it, papito? Oh, my car! And a lot of times, that's how we be with God. We be just wasting time on stuff, and God is like, come on, grow up. Get over it. And uh, that's a good lesson learned. There's so much you can learn from children. May the Lord bless the children. Amen? Amen. Give children credit. It's a lot to sit through. My sons, when my wife and I, 24-7, basically, by the grace of God, and still for them to sit through it. You know, when I was y'all age, I don't know how I would handle this. Fasting and going without and then sitting through eight hours of a conference at 10 or 12 or whatever. So we want to show gratitude to all the children and the young men and women. Amen. Thank you guys for your patience. Thank you for, thank you for being a part of this because you will be blessed. Amen. Now let's fast forward. Acts 3, 14. Look at what it says. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Did you hear that? So he's declaring that they as a group denied the righteous. In that interesting wordplay. Isn't it interesting? Amen. Wow. Uh, we're not going to read it, but Acts 7.52, write that down as well. It talks about the coming of the righteous one. That he would come to the earth. That's Acts 7.52. Oh, there's so many to read. I don't really want to even skip over any of these. Man. All right, quickly, 1 Peter 2. We got this, though. If we flow right, we got this. Lord willing. Let's go. 1 Peter chapter 2. 
verse 24 I'm reading who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whom stripes you were healed and of course we parallel that go to Isaiah 53 quickly I'm reading verse 11 53 verse 11 let's go he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many did y'all catch that who was the father talking about that's amazing my righteous servant but wait a minute there's not one right Wow Wow there's so much to cover here I got a lot but I'll end up throwing them on um, I'm gonna throw them on the screen for the video y'all just for the sake of getting this all done please okay because when you see where this goes I promise you you're gonna love Jesus more now than you did flying in here driving in buses and walking and biking however you got here because when you are hungry for the Lord you will walk to hear the Lord. Amen. Oh, are y'all ready to have some fun? Amen. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? The Father of Glory. Remember when we went on a school trip and we started going through the scriptures and we found him all over the place when you replace the word glory for Jesus? Ain't that something? You ready, my brother? You ready? Brother, brothers, are y'all ready? Yeah. Got some bold brothers up in. Ladies, are y'all ready? Yeah. Men. Ladies, can we give the fellas one more time? It's been a long day for them. Fellas, are you ready? Yeah. Y'all better sit down, ladies. You ain't winning that one. Y'all ready? Let's go. Watch this. We're going we to have so much fun. Glory be to the Lord. Go to Psalms 98 and I'll show you Christ. Psalms 98 and I'm going to show you Christ. Let's go. Yo, my son be making fun of me. He be like, yo, dad, when you go to conferences, you be just randomly singing songs. Like, I'm going to take a break and chill with the Lord. Yo, our children got a great sense of humor, man. Amazing. Pay more attention to your children, man. You'll see their personality. And you'll be, you be thanking God for men in your life and women in your life. But you'll be surprised how much you will appreciate your sons and daughters in your life. And how cool they really are if you actually spend time with them and talk with them. Amen. They are faithful when you teach them faithfulness. Psalms 98, are y'all ready? I heard you, my brother. Let's go. Y'all ready to see Jesus? Let's see if we can find out who the righteousness of God really is. Is it just a title of a bunch of good things or is it a person? Which one y'all think it is? Oh, come on, say it again. Verse 1 going down, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand, oh, come on, there's Jesus. His holy arm, oh, come on, there's Jesus. Christ of Nazareth hath gotten him the victory. Did he not say it is finished? Did he not have the victory? The Lord hath made known his salvation. Sure. Oh, come on. Yeah, salvation is Yeshua. Oh, y'all acting up. <laughs> Listen to this. His righteousness has he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. Wait a minute. Did not Jesus come to the earth and preach to the lost? Did his righteousness not get shown in the sight of the heathen? That was, that's not a, 
That amen was a little weak. Amen. Give God glory, man. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me Isaiah would say the same thing? Go to Isaiah 56. Come on. We're going we to have fun with this. I'm there. Let's go. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting, y'all. Verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, keep you judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. And notice that, you know, Isaiah is that book. Isaiah is that book that points to the Messiah. Oh, this is amazing. So we see here that Jesus was brought forth, manifested in the flesh, and he was in the midst of the heathen. Y'all ready? Come on, let's keep going down the road with this bus, shall we? Amen. It's a little school trip going on, y'all. Y'all online, you here too. You on the bus. Don't be offended. We love you. They're on the digital bus. Right? But they with us in spirit. Amen? Amen? All the beloved in Christ. Now, that red dot on, that red dot on, sister? Thank you. You know I love you. Check it out. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Amen. Go to Proverbs 11. We about to find Jesus. We about to find this. Oh, you're 11. <laughs> you, I take it you're already there. <laughs> okay. Are y'all ready to see Christ? Amen. Are you ready to see another attribute, another hidden revelation of Christ? Amen. Okay. Proverbs 11 verse 4. Let's see it. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Wait a minute, because this wouldn't add up any other way, because there's nothing good of righteousness you can do to be delivered from the power of death. Yes or no? Righteousness, or Jesus Christ, delivers from death. Are you seeing Jesus Christ or not? Amen. Are you seeing Yahushua or not? Amen. Are you seeing Yeshua? Amen. Are you seeing Yesu? Amen. Jesus Christo. Amen. Okay, let's keep moving. Y'all ready to keep the bus moving? All right. Okay. Isaiah 46, 13. Quickly. Quickly now. Isaiah 46, 13. Look at what it says in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off and my salvation shall not tarry. I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. Yes or no is not salvation there referenced to eternal life. Come on, talk to me. Wow, amazing. But hold on. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm almost there. Wait, I'm there. Wait, I'm not. I'm in 1 Corinthians. Hold on. I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, I'm just being honest. You know what I mean? 2 Corinthians 1. Okay, here we go. We're going to go to verse... Hallelujah. 10. It says, Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us you see Old Testament righteousness delivers from death Paul confirms it oh that's amazing ain't it okay there's more but I'm not gonna give multiple examples I'll just save it for the video is that fair okay let's see Jesus again get it get back on the bus children <laughs> Proverbs 12 let's go quick Whoever gets there, I'm going to 28. Look at what it says. In the way of righteousness is what? Wait, hold on a minute. I thought Jesus says, I will give you life. So in the way of Jesus Christ is... Come on, brothers and sisters, you'll be eating soon. Come on, in the way of righteousness is... You eating now. Amen. Amen. Yes or no, did you just see Jesus? Yes. 
Do we really have to go through the scriptures where Jesus says, I am the life? We don't have to, right? We could just put them on the screen for the video. Lord willing. Amen. You all know this, right? He's the life. Amen. Okay, we can keep it moving. Got you, right? I got you. Oh, this, wow. Oh, there's so many. All right, let's just do it. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. There's actually two here, which is great. We're going to go through both. Go to verse 30. It says, The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talks of judgment. Do we really got to go to the New Testament with that? I got you. I'll prove it. Or I could just put it on the screen later. For the sake of time. Are we all in agreement that the mouth of Jesus Christ spoke utterly pure, perfect wisdom? Because, see, Paul tried to set us on a little crumb. I don't like the word set. Place us on a crumb trail when he said Christ is both the wisdom and the power of God. He didn't say he has wisdom of God. He said he is the wisdom. He is the power of God. Right? Oh, this is amazing. Amazing. So we'll, we'll skip the, the verification for the screen. But this one, though, go to verse 32. Y'all ready for it? Wait till you see how crystal clear it pops at you. The wicked watch the righteous and seek to slay him. <laughs> oh, y'all yeah, thought it was a game. Wow. Isn't it, excited to, isn't it exciting to see Jesus so many places? But just for the sake of it, go to Psalms 34 as well. Reverse your vehicle. Now, go to verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Was he not wounded for our... Was he not bruised for our... And Father, I pray for everybody's strength to overcome right now, to be blessed in Jesus Christ's name. We, we're, we're breezing, y'all. You ready? Yeah. Now. Oh, this is so good. Now, in John 11, you can write it down. Jesus even calls them out throughout the gospel. He says, then why do you want to kill me? Isn't that not what the, the Pharisees did? They sought to kill him. Okay. Oh, y'all thought it was done. Go to Psalms 94. You know, David is that guy. The Lord was always before him, he said. Didn't he say that? All right, quickly. Isn't this interesting? Wow. Psalms 94, verse 21. Let's read it. They gather themselves together against the soul of the... And condemn the innocent. Didn't they say? Judas, Judas said, I have what? Innocent blood. Did they not condemn him to death? Y'all, come on. You, you must see Jesus here. And I think it's fair that you allow me to put the, the New Testament confirmation on the screen. So we can really get a, the message fully complete. Is that a fair deal? Amen. Unless it's something that I feel like some of you may not know. But y'all do know they conspired against him. I don't have to break that down, right? Is that fair? Okay, let's go. Oh, come on. You know, I'm going to tell you though. We, we, got, we can't skip over Job though. Job has not really made it into this message. So we got to... We got to bring that blessed book of Job here. Go to Job. And I want you to go to 34. Watch this quickly. 34 of Job. 
Watch what it says in verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall even he that have right govern and will condemn him that is not is most just? Who is the most just? Okay, I'm just trying to show you something. Just keeping it real with you. Go to Proverbs though. Proverbs 10. Let's see something. Y'all there? Okay. Let's see what verse 11 says. Let's see if we can find Jesus Christ on this field trip. Y'all ready for it? Verse 11. The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life. Huh, interesting. I, I thought the Bible says that Jesus is the well of life. I thought, let someone check. He was the one who said he would give us water. How many of y'all are seeing Jesus Christ crystal clear? Amen. Now you're more excited to look through the scriptures, ain't you? Amen. Let's go. Y'all ready? So the righteous, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. Amen? Amen. And all the verses, I'll put them on the screen. Now, Proverbs 10 in verse 25, it says the righteous is a everlasting foundation. Hmm. I thought Jesus Christ told us to build upon him. I mean, y'all, you can't make this up. Oh, y'all about to be amazed. Go to uh, chapter 11. You know what, Brother Rich, for that nugget you gave, you earned it nice and loud, brother. I know you got that voice. I want you to read Proverbs 11, verse 30, nice and loud. Oh, you can stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Oh. Souls is wise. The fruit of who? Is a what? Y'all are you seeing Jesus Christ? Amen. Once again I'll put the scriptures on the screen referring to Revelation 22. Okay Proverbs 14. I might have you reading for now. <laughs> that brother deep. Walls are shaking. Y'all ready for it? Look how beautiful this is. Go to Proverbs 14. And we're going to read verse 32. 31 going down. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. But he that honoreth him have, shall have mercy on the poor. Listen. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous has hope in his death. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus told them, tear down this temple. And in three days, maybe I think so. No, I will. And remember, there's other forms of righteous that apply to God's children. You see? So that means that as we walk in Christ and we obtain his righteousness, we have hope. In what? Well, referring to the scripture, it says the righteous has hope in his death. That's why if you notice those that are truly born again, you ever see people that are dying? They're just like, no, oh, child, just, <laughs> I'm going to be with the Lord. Why are you so calm, Grandma? Oh, I know where I'm going. Yo, that's beautiful. When you can be, you know, it's beautiful, it's sad because a lot of elders are trying to be 20 again. Wearing whore clothes and men trying to run after young women and they don't know how to be elders and be pray, pray and be an example. They're still trying to talk hood and cuss and yo ski. You know what I'm saying? But there was a time where elders they're at home now. 
They're not at the club. They're not getting that level of temptation. So they have an advantage to step into a certain level of holiness and righteousness. And that's why the elders are supposed to be prayer warriors because they're abstaining from sin. Their prayers are really strong. Right? Let's keep it moving. Oh, it's about to get deeper. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. This is so good. All right. Proverbs 23. Come on. This one is amazing. They all are, but you know what I mean. Go to verse 34. We're, uh, 24, we're reading. It says, The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have have joy of him so hold on a minute the father of the righteous shall rejoice interesting isn't it that the father rejoiced in the son right this is my beloved son what oh isn't that so beautiful isn't that so beautiful Psalms 34 quickly That's how you know the love of God is so heavy. When somebody sneezes and gets 380 bless you's at the same time. <laughs> Ach! Bless you! That's, that's kind of wise to sneeze up in here. I'll take 600 bless you's real quick. <laughs> Alright, come on. Let, let's go. Psalms 34. Maybe see if we can get a snack. Anyone got a snack for that child? Or maybe try walking the baby to put the baby to sleep. Like just walk back and forth may help as well. Amen. Psalms 34. We, we there? All right, well, hold on. Wait for me. Hold on. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. This is interesting. Because you can look at this in two ways. The eyes of the Father were always on Christ. Because he is the righteous one. He always heard his sons cry. You see? Jesus would go off into the mountains. Weeping for the people. Praying. And... But it also shows you when we take upon his righteousness. God the Father will watch us. And be open to our so a lot of people, they, they try to flip things and email my wife and I and I'm done. God don't hear me. He's not doing it. But they're living completely unrighteous and they wonder why he's not responding to them. You have to at least start trying, y'all. Try. He will meet you. Try to live a righteous life. I'm telling you. Anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> Oh, this one, we don't even got to, actually, you know what, we don't even have to go there, but Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, the righteous are as bold as a lion, as a lion and it just so happens to be in revelation. It just so happens to be that Jesus Christ is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come on, talk to me. Are y'all seeing Jesus Christ or not? Amen. I'm going to read this one. Just write it down. Proverbs 29 verse 7 says, The righteous remembers the poor. I'll put the scriptures on the screen, Lord willing. Did not Jesus Christ remember the poor? Amen. Did he not multiply the bread? Did he not have compassion? Did not Jesus remember the poor? Oh, this is so good. Wow. I'm going to, I'll do this. A couple of these I'm just going to read, paraphrase, and I'll put the scriptures on the screen. Because a lot of these, most of y'all should know. Amen? 
It says the righteous shall flourish as a branch. But isn't it interesting that Jesus is called the you can't make this up. That's right. You can't make this up. Wow. No wonder I'm hated. The devil don't want Jesus to be revealed in deeper ways. Blessed are you when men shall revile and persecute and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, the Bible says. The Lord himself says. Listen to this. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe I'll skip that one. Oh, this one is big. Go to Psalms 58. Watch this one. Man. I had such a good time just fellowshipping with the Lord with this message. And you know he had to pull the butt weight. There's more on me. Psalms 58. Come on. Let's get there. Okay, I'm reading verse 10. Verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice and see the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Go to Revelation. Some of y'all are catching it. Y'all better catch it. Go to Revelation 19. <laughs> Remember it said the, wash, the righteous shall wash his feet in what? Okay. Just double checking. Revelation 19. Who's going to get there? I like that. We're reading verse 10 going down. No, 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, interesting, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called, what? The word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations. Now, isn't this interesting? Because when you correlate this, go to Revelation 14. Verse 18. And another angel out... Uh, came out from the altar which had the power of a fire and cried a loud voice to him that had a sharp sickle saying thrust thy sharp sickle and gather clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe how many y'all remember how it says that the blood of the slaughtered will be up to what are y'all seeing this scripture now are you seeing the blood are you seeing how the righteous will wash his feet in the blood. Yes or no? That's right. Well said. Oh, this is so good. Now this one, bride of Christ, is a, is a word of encouragement for you. That love the Lord. Go to Psalms 118. Psalms 118. You ready for it? Verse 15. I love this one. I'm reading. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Wait a minute, pause. Did you just hear that? No, nah, I don't think you caught it. Let me say it again. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of Jesus. That means when we gather together in the house of the Lord, we rejoice and praise. Our voice is in the tabernacle of the righteous, referring to Christ. We're at a conference right now. This is considered a a building that we have temporarily said this is a house of God and let me read it again because I don't think y'all caught it 
the voice of rejoicing in salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. Did we not rejoice today? In the tabernacle of the righteous? Jesus Christ? That's interesting. Interesting. Oh, this, <laughs> oh, this one is so good. Now go to 119 verse 40. You ready? Watch this. I'm reading. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy... What? Quicken me in thy... What would be the odds that in 1 Corinthians 15... <laughs> come on. Come on. Y'all there or not? 1 Corinthians 15, 22. I'm reading. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That's the same word, quicken. Quicken me in thy righteousness. We are in Christ. He's the only one that can quicken us. You know what that means, right? Quicken. You know the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, right? It means alive. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful. That one really blessed me. This one is going to hit you like a ton of bricks, y'all. Go to Amos. Amos has made an appearance. Can I get it? Amen. Amos 2. Who's going to get there, though? That's all I want to know. All right. Well, hold on now. All right. Amos 2. Look at what it says in verse Amos chapter 2, verse 6. Y'all ready? Let's read it together. One two three thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Israel and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they sold the righteous for silver and the poor I can't do this right now I can't do it. oh Lord you are so good they sold the righteous for silver did not Jesus Christ get sold for how many pieces of silver 30 pieces of silver one for every year of his life as he entered into his ministry you can write that one down Go to 1 Timothy 1.9. We about to, it's about to heat up, y'all. It's about to heat up. So are you convinced already? We don't have to go forward, but are you convinced that Jesus is the literal righteousness of the Father? Amen. Okay, great. Go to 1 Timothy 1, quickly. This is great. I love it. 1 Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, just for you, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to hear it at home, like, Dad, you did it again. 1 Timothy 1, 9, you ready? Yes. Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man. Oh, come on. This means that because Jesus Christ, because the law was not made for him, when he entered in and overcame the law, he obtained all authority over the law. It's basically the hood equivalent. I, years ago, I grew up around gangsters, drug dealers, like a lot of you. And um, there, there was a guy who was like a, an actual like, the hood got a lot of serial killers, but they're not serial killers. And that's not what they're called. But people that do a lot of drive-bys, a lot of shootings, they're just considered bad man, just a killer. But in like suburban neighborhoods, it's serial killer. Right? And um, I'll never forget going to the Bronx and, and for miles. We went into this club in one of the worst parts of the Bronx. And there's no other tone 
beyond the eye could see. There was no other white person. And I'm in the club, chilling, young. And on the strength of real killers, Oh, y'all see where I'm going with this. And when, I, when we left the club, and of course, this is all evil. I'm talking about my old life, y'all. Come on. We leave the club, and coming out of some other club is one other white person. And within 3.4 minutes, he got doofed up. Like, I'm talking bad. This, these, this brother ran up on him and gave him an uppercut that was so bad. Like he went, he lifted up and dropped. Unfortunately, you know, there's race war and there's all type of things. And sometimes one color in a all white neighborhood and the KKK is heavy or a white person deep in some neighborhood in the Bronx. There could be a lot of people fueled by hatred because of things they've gone through and seen and were deceived about. Remember, Jesus said what? Nation shall rise against nation. But what I'm, what I'm saying here is that it was different with me. You know, real recognize real. And the, the people that I was with, others knew, don't play with the white guy. Don't play with him. He's not the dude over there laying on the street knocked out. If you play with this guy, you're going to have a real problem. Do you understand where I'm going with this? So correlating that to what we were just talking about. What was the last thing we read so I could remember why I brought it up? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And, and thank you, y'all. The reason I brought up a, like a worldly analogy to help you have a greater understanding is the law was not made for the righteous. And because Jesus Christ went into the law and conquered the law, he now has authority over the law for us. So when the devil tries to accuse me of transgressing the law, I'm with Jesus. You can't touch me. Don't play with that. Don't play with the short guy. You see in the parallel now. Don't play with him. The one I'm with has authority to cover me. You follow? That's good. Parables are very good. I love the fact Jesus Christ gave a lot of parables and analogies because he was concerned that you understood. So when I take the time, I'm not just telling a bunch of stories. I'm bringing an analogy or a parable for you to see it compared to what I'm trying to explain to you. And it work. Glory to Christ. So now the law is not made for the righteous. Now... We know that the Bible says there's not a righteous man on the earth. So what we need to do now is go back to the first letter of John, chapter 2. What time is it? Okay, praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm enjoying that I don't feel the pressure where we can really get this wrapped up. Okay? Y'all enjoying the meal? Amen. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Stay strong. So now we, we realize that we've already went through the Hebrew, what it means, the righteous. It's, it's t Sadiq. There's a T-S-A-D and then D-E-E-K is how you pronounce it. Sadiq. Right? And the Greek is so eloquently put. Dakaios. And it's righteous, just, right, meet. Observ observing. So now let's break this down and see Jesus Christ, shall we? Observing divine laws, virtuous, and keeping the commands of God. It's safe to say that this can only be Jesus Christ. Amen. Perfectly doing it, yes or no? Amen. Many have tried and all have failed. But look at this. Of those who seem to be themselves righteous, we can skip over that because we know those were like the Pharisees, right? That like to sit in high places. Jesus, this was a direct conflict. How beautiful is this? Righteousness in the flesh was fighting against unrighteousness in the flesh. He stood straight against the religious leaders and said, you are unrighteous. You think you're righteous. You're self-righteous. You've lifted yourself up. You like to get praise from one another. Remember he said that? 
Watch this, y'all. Wait how beautifully this picture is painted by Christ. Look at this. Y'all ready? No, no, no. I'm still going over the, the definitions. I want to do that before we go to John. Peep this. Check this out. Innocent, faultless, and guiltless. Is it safe to say? Now, this is the literal Greek in definitions. Who else could this be talking about? Faultless? Blameless? There's none. So are we all in agreement? Our beloved brothers and sisters online, are we not all in, in agreement? This is only talking about Christ. Amen. Yeshua the Messiah. Okay, let's see if we can keep going with this. Let's, let's break this down. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. Used of him whose ways of thinking, feeling, acting is wholly conformed to the will of God. Who therefore needs no ratification in heart and life. Jesus Christ only wanted to do the will of the Father. Always. Again, could this be anyone else but Christ? Are we all in agreement this is Jesus Christ? Amen. The very definition of righteous and just is speaking and pointing to the Lamb of God. Amen. He is so awesome right now. I just want to jump for joy. Y'all, we are not done. You wait till we go with this. You, yes. Watch this. In a judicial sense, passing just judgment on others. I love this one. Because the Bible says if we judge, it has to be righteous judgment. But of a truth, he is the one who can judge righteously. And he is the one to judge. In that time yes or no okay let, let's keep going now we're gonna we're gonna do this now now this is where it's gonna get very exciting increased very fast are y'all ready I want to talk about I want to talk about unrighteousness this word is adikia adikia and it can mean iniquity injustice of heart and life a deed of violating God's laws and justice are you starting to see it so when the Bible talks about the unrighteous right it's those who transgress against God which is every single one of us every single one of us And I want you to think of unrighteousness and sin almost like a virus in a sense, right? Where if one drop of a virus hypothetically enters a body, the person instinctively knows, or bacteria, whatever is more accurate, the person instinctively knows he's not going to, he or she is not going to be, oh, it's just a drop, I'll be fine. They're going to go, oh no, this is going to isn't that a good analogy? So being unrighteous with God in one area don't matter. It's a virus. It spreads. The whole body becomes contaminated. See how deep it is? See how much we need the Messiah? But come on, y'all. There's more. So now we're seeing righteous and we're seeing unrighteous. But the interesting thing is that it really boils down to disobeying God's commands and laws right so then this is where it really took an amazing turn go back to the letter of John how are those chairs y'all nice they soft comfortable and I wish I knew thank you brother if I said I'll quit you feel me I gotta stand for the son of man Come on, go back to 1 John. Stop playing games. Y'all there? Okay. Go back to chapter 2. We're going to break this down microscopically. Verse 1. My little, ch my little children, these things write I to you, that you sin not. So there's, the, there's, that, there's that command. Don't play with God. You know you ain't supposed to fornicate. You know you ain't supposed to dirty up your temple. 
You know you ain't supposed to defile and do worldly things. Don't sin. However, if you're trying hard and you mess up, something happens, it better not be... Look, man, I don't care what you've learned online and all. Fornication is not a light thing. People have been so corrupt in their mind, but like, yeah, I slipped. You slipped? Are you not know hellfire is awaiting you if you don't stop? Touching pornea and adultery and all. You better stop playing with God. But, however, if you're striving to live a holy and righteous life and you happen to make a mistake, you feel terrible about it. We've all been there, right? But if, if a man sin, if any man sin, it says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Isn't that interesting? It says Jesus Christ the righteous. Okay. Then I told y'all there's a there's a habit, there's a there's a, a common trend in the midst of these revelations where when it starts getting towards the end of the message, it gets real, it like speeds up. It's like you remember back in the day in the world, 4th of July, it's little nuggets blowing up throughout the sermon, right? But then all of a sudden at the end, it's like bang, 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 bang. All the children are like this. I love that. I love when it's just flooded with revelation. And it goes from one level to the next level to the next level. Y'all ready for it? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Well, what if I told you? <laughs> well, first off, first off, it is said in Matthew 5, we all know throughout the word that Jesus fulfilled the law, correct? You know, that word in the Greek is pleiru. I think is how it's pronounced. But it means to make full, to fill up. Listen to this very carefully. This is going to change your perspective. To render full, complete, to end, to satisfy. Go to Matthew 3, quickly. We're gonna, we got John, we're going to go back, but... Y'all know how we do at these conferences. Glory to God. Go to Matthew 3 quickly. Real quick. We're just going to read this now. Verse 15. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Not some righteousness all righteousness remember in the last previous message Jesus took a checklist and fulfilled all the promises of the father well how many of y'all know that he had another checklist he had to fulfill all righteousness he had to fulfill every part of the law is not our God amazing but wait, y'all, wait, let me show you the, 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 the amazingness. Did I, just, I think I just made up a word, the amazingness. Look, it, it worked. Look at this amazing revelation. We just seen this Greek word at the end of the first layer of definition means to satisfy. Also to fill to the top so that nothing shall be wanted. Full measure complete. To render perfect. Carry through to the end to accomplish, ratify, finish. Wait, pause. Imagine this. Imagine this. Let me come down. Asking the Lord for another analogy. Help me, Lord. Aha. Thank you. It's a good looking bottle of water. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Until this bottle is filled up with this water, no one is allowed eternal life. Y'all better follow this. It's so good. This water represents fulfilling the law. 
Many men have come and go trying to fulfill the law. They'll get here, they'll get here, they'll get here, they'll get here. Are y'all following? Can y'all see back there? No man could fulfill and fill this bottle up. God the Father says, when you fill this bottle to the very top, I'm satisfied. It's finished. I'm satisfied. Jesus comes along, takes an empty bottle, and through his 30 years or so on the earth, he actually does it. He fills the bottle to the top. God the Father satisfied. Man goes, I want to go back here. How stupid is that? I threw it too far. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Blah. You could take this bottle and walk with the Lord and satisfy the Father. Or you could, you could try to be some fancy person online and change your name and try to understand Hebrew to the point you take upon the very same spirit as even those group of people over there that hate anyone but a Hebrew. You do know that, right? Isn't it interesting that the, the disgusting books that they study called the Babylonian Talmud, they think it's permissible to raise a child under the age of three. They say that Jesus, they lie, but it's really there, is in, in a boiling bowl of feces in hell for his blasphemy. And they say that anyone who is not Hebrew or what they would say Jewish is goyim. They're like cattle. They're underneath us. That's why they're to serve us. Isn't it interesting that when you see other people claim to be Hebrew Israelites on the corner with purple capes looking like wrestlers from the WWE, they take upon the same spirit. If I walk by them with my amazingly blessed wife, what are they going to say? Oh, you're with a devil. Not knowing I'm a child of God. They take upon the same spirit. This is the danger of trying to go back to this. Because you'll never fill this ever, 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 ever. You can't finish it. It's already done. Jesus did it. And to go back to this means you're trying to rob him of his glory. You're saying, no, I want to do it. But we just read, it means to satisfy. How many of y'all, like, think about this logically. I got one more analogy. Please let me. Imagine you go to a restaurant tonight. You're like, amen. <laughs> and the waiter, think about this. It'd be crazy. I got to do it. I have to. Is it okay if I just wet this up a little bit? Can you? Is it ungodly? It's just water. All right, fine, I won't. I kind of want to, but I'm going to leave it alone. Imagine you pull your cup out, and the waitress is like, oh, you want some lemonade? You're like, yeah. And you're just holding it out. You're like, thanks. And you're talking with some brother or sister in the Lord, your husband or wife. You're and you hear this dripping noise, and the whole table is soaking. She's just sitting there. <laughs> and she's, the water's overflowing. You're going to be like, ma'am, I'm satisfied. The cup is filled. Can you stop, please? What are you doing? Would you not stop her? It's not, oh, this is so good. Is not God the Father satisfied with what Jesus did? Did he not fill the cup? What are you doing? He's happy. He's satisfied. Listen. Y'all, this is about to go somewhere completely different. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell <laughs> Let me double check the time. Oh, no. <laughs> Looks like I'll be finishing it online. 
Okay, y'all ready? We're going to try to do it, though. We're going to try to do it. The reason why I had to go now, I need, I need, oh, come on. I need, uh, like, four volunteers. I need somebody, I need, uh, I need two chairs. Come on, talk to me. Come on now. You know what? Let's do it. We're going to get, y'all, yeah, one chair here. Thank you. Oh, he beat you. <laughs> he, okay, one chair here. One chair here. They're a little close, but that's all right. Uh, no, just, just two chairs. Thank you. Now, let me see. Who do I want to pick? Blanco! Come on up here, man. Come on up here, man. You got to switch up, you know what I mean? Try to hide in the back because they know I'll be picking people. Just. Oh, did he just did he call me? He checked it with his wife. It, it, did he really just call me? Come on up here, my beloved brother. Have a seat right there. Come on up here, my beloved brother. Have a seat right there. Now. What this is going to be is for the, for the sake of you seeing this amazing revelation, he's going to play the role of God the Father on the throne. Not literally, this ain't blasphemy, we're just giving this parable. Are we all fair with this? Amen. He's going to play the role of Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father. Are we cool with that? How y'all on the stage and get to sit down? I've been here four hours and been standing. Okay, y'all ready? So now we go back to 1 John. 1 John. Now, let's get ready now. Y'all ready for it? If you ready for it, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is amazing. This is fascinating. Love that smile. Here we go. Chapter 2 again. And if any sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, what's interesting, and I'll have to probably do a little mini dinner table and slip it in there, you know what I mean? Just edit it in, and you'll go right back to the conference, Lord willing. <laughs> There's two key words, gentlemen, that we need to talk about. We need to talk about righteous, which we, safe to say, we've done for an hour and a half, yes? yes. Amen. Without a doubt, who's the righteous of God? Jesus Christ. Righteousness became flesh and dwelt among us, amen? amen. But advocate? Advocate, okay. Before we get to advocate, Oh, no, no, no. No, that's the right order. That's right, Lord. Hallelujah. I almost jumped ahead of myself. Let me read this. Listen to the definition of advocate. Follow me now as I follow Christ. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Oh, come on. You know, you know what it's like when the, the chef get to try the meal first? He got, you know they got the little, they got like, a, like three spoons that they taste test with. Unless they're gross and they dip, you know. Not supposed to do that. And it's just like, oh, these people don't know how good this is. They about to enjoy. Y'all ready for it? Well. Oh, this is so good. All right, let's just go for it. Advocate. In the Greek, it's the word parakitos. Parakitos, maybe. But it's someone summoned 
pay attention, called to one side. Now hold on. I know y'all be like, why does he do this? Let me explain something to y'all. Okay? Many people online who have the spirit of Antichrist. Let, let me say that again very clear. Looking into the camera. Many people online who have a spirit of Antichrist who deny Jesus Christ as God Almighty try to pull the card of he's at the right hand of the Father. How many times you've heard that? When you glorify Jesus for who he truly is and they'll say well, he's at the right hand. Obviously he's not God. Huh? A whole lot, don't you? Well, I, I got some rough news for those people. This is something that if they got a forked tongue and they're good at manipulating, they could try to explain for an hour and just confuse people. But without a doubt, you cannot explain this one away. This is the fact that I'm about to show y'all. And when you see this, you are going to be amazed. Remember when Jesus said that to the people? He said, you will all be amazed. Remember that? He wasn't playing. I love the word of God. Amen. Do you love the word? Amen. Do you love the word? Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, I had to break that down so that way you could see you don't get caught up in the snare of foolish debates. You go to the Father for the revelation. Because not everything is just written plain. There's some things in the word that I have you going, oh. But he'll give you precept what? Upon a precept. Come on, talk to me. The word will always confirm the word. Y'all ready for it now? Yes. Listen to this definition now. <laughs> to be called to one side, to one's aid. One who pleads another's cause before a judge, a pleader, counselor, or defense, a legal assistant, a advocate. One who pleads another's cause before a judge, an intercessor. Pause right there. Y'all ready for the revelation? Amen. Come on, a little louder. Amen. Let, me, let me show you why. Y'all ready for it? Listen carefully now. Jesus Christ is omnipresent. You do know that, right? Yes. Jesus Christ is literally at the right hand of the Father. This is a fact. But he's also inside of me. Amen. And I would hope that he's inside of you. Amen. So if he's at the right hand of the Father and he's also inside of us, he also appeared to Paul and blinded him on the road to Damascus. Clearly, he has a whole lot of places he can be at once. Are y'all following? In fact, Jesus said something in John that a lot of you have heard me say. He says, no one has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man who is in heaven. Well, wait a minute. You're standing on the earth telling people you're in heaven. Oh. Or did you ever consider the fact that when Jesus Christ said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. He was saying that on earth and the Father was on the throne. So how was he in the Father and the Father is in him? Uh, so let's go with it. Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready to praise the Lord? Amen. 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 What if I told you the reason we went through the righteous aspect of it first and the reason we went through showing you how he completed the law, he fulfilled it, he satisfied the Father for us and we got scriptures we're going to talk about before we close up what if i told you what he really did in essence because hebrews will break it down to the point you get so full you want to take a nap the meal is so good paul knows how to write through christ amen he breaks down the lord in such detail but basically it goes like this jesus christ gave up everything and 
earned it back as a man would. Are you following? Some of you ain't. Jesus Christ, when he came to the earth, that's why he said later on in life, I want the glory I had with you in the beginning. That means he left it with the Father. Come on, follow me now as I follow Christ. Jesus Christ, it says, in every way was tempted as us. God is not tempted. But he's more than God in this situation. He was also fully man. Son of man, son of God. God became man, man became God. Not any man, the Almighty in flesh. You, are you following? It merged, it married the two principles. Oh, this is so good. Whoa, hold on, hold on. Thank you, though. There was a marrying. Okay. So he fulfilled the law for us. He's above the law. Righteous and holy. The reason why Jesus Christ is still at the right hand of the Father is because we are still committing sins. And he has to be the one because come on what was the definition of advocate somebody who stands next to a judge and pleads the case of the guilty so if he left this place we would be hopeless oh come on oh no no y'all ain't catching it yet some of you ain't the reason he's at the right hand now is because we are still walking the earth and have free will so every time we make a mistake Jesus Christ speaks to his father for us that's, that's why he's at the right hand of the father wow. wow now i'm going to show you something come here you're going to be an example this is amazing you're going to play the role of somebody committed a transgression you're going to go immediately you're ready to wipe him off the the face of the map stand uh to the left of the camera kind of there so they can see you get the point Right? So, uh, whatever. I'll just play the role of a, 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 an angel announcing him as a sinner. Whatever. Right? So, he's in transgression. He deserves nothing but utter destruction. Immediately. Now, y'all pay attention. This will put a tear in some of y'all eyes. What I want you to do. The minute he raises his arm... To go strike him with judgment to destroy him I want you to say father no forgive him on my behalf I fulfilled the law he's guilty wipe him out go ahead father please do it on my account do it for me what forgive him forgive him that's all it takes thank you that's all it takes that's all it takes. Are you hearing me? He deserves. He is unrighteous. He transgressed the law. It don't matter if he made the mistake and for the rest of his life tried to do right. It don't matter. The law don't work that way. It don't forget. You know that person in the hood? They don't forget when you do wrong to them and they'll plot and wait to get you back. The law don't forget. So it don't matter if he transgressed just one time and for the rest of his life tried his best to please the father. It don't matter. According to God's law, he's unrighteous. He got to go. But the minute he stands before God the father, Jesus Christ the almighty says, Father, forgive him for me. And the father looks at the only one who's qualified Oh, wow. He looks at the only one who's qualified to stop him. He looks at the only one the law wasn't made for. And because the law wasn't made for him, he has the right to intervene for any of us. Oh, come on, talk to me. You can have a seat. Stay there. You better say hallelujah. You just got off a heavy judgment. Now, 
I do want to let you know this is what makes it more terrifying when you can learn this knowledge and go on living very wicked and sinful knowing how much the son suffered that you could be forgiven by the father for standing in the gap and forgiving you this is the reason why the son is still at the right hand of the father it's not because he's a lesser God he's the Almighty and the only one it's kind of like he's Dominican let's say he got a Dominican cousin who's crazy with the hands not good but let's say he was a pro boxer back in DR he could break a jaw with one knock and let's say let's say one of his friends comes around and doesn't understand the danger of his cousin and because he's playful with him he disrespects his cousin thinking he's joking and he sees his cousin's face his cousin's like he's get, he, he knows his cousin's getting ready to he's, he's in that stance you know that stance that one two stance he's getting ready to knock him out and he's like yo mira no that's my bro man he's stupid right now he's a little he's not himself right now please for the strength of me I'm your family leave him alone he deserves it he I'll talk to him later he disrespected but don't do it to him yeah. are you seeing the analogy are you seeing how many times but if you keep doing it you know what's gonna happen I don't need uh, no I have to tell you if you keep disrespecting the one that's standing at the right hand the only one that can stand in the gap for you what do you think Abraham was a reflection of when he stood in the gap for Sodom and Gomorrah he stood in the gap he stood in the gap he stood in the gap but after a while he said nah I gotta chill I'm talking to God you know what deal with it and God wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah because they would not turn they were wicked I promise you this if you think Jesus Christ does not have principles that he's just gonna sit there every single time knowing you know better I'm warning you right now you know better he knows you're not gonna be perfect overnight but you better be striving for perfection that means you're gonna get the call of weed some of y'all that still smoke you got your deliverance prayer and the devil is so slick you pull up to a light leaving here and three cats will be in the whip just smoking a smoking a whatever spliff L I don't know what they call it nowadays right and, and and the devil have just the the weed smoke just go right into your car your windows are up the vents are shut and still it's in your car and they're like mmm that smell good don't it you know Dallas got that, that Dallas be getting that weed man you what is that you have to right there be like okay I got a little tempted in the mind but I'm not gonna do it for a minute there I was enjoying the smell but I'm not gonna do it when you get that call from your so-called ex I'm not gonna do that when you're online and a certain video pops up I'm not gonna do that because it is not a game that the righteous advocate is at the right hand of the father for my sake why do you think certain people get smoked in court you know what that means right that means they get utterly hit with the book what you don't know is the backstory a lot of times dude has been in front of the same judge 10 times for the same thing and the judge didn't let him off let him off let her off let her off gave her a deal house arrest paid a fine but eventually the judge just said you know what get in prison you are you are ungrateful for my mercy to you as a judge do not get to that place with Christ because he says in Revelation he will throw you on a bed he will personally throw you on that bed I'm not gonna get into that right now so brothers and sisters next time somebody tries to undermine Jesus Christ as the Almighty because he's at the right hand of the Father tell that person you should be grateful he's at the right hand of the Father because he's the only one that'll stand in the gap for you he's the only one that can stand in the gap for your blasphemous self
for your blasphemous self. And if they've gone too far and blasphemed the Holy Ghost, it's a wrap for them. But I find it interesting how Jesus stood up for that martyr. That's a whole nother story. Stay right there just for a minute, gentlemen. Because we, we, we wrapping up. We got to get baptisms done. But I want to show y'all something, okay? So now, listen very carefully. Remember Malachi 4 says, The Son of Righteousness will arise with what? Amen. Healing in His wings, right? Notice that the Bible says, go to, we're going to be quick with this, go to Psalm 71. What time is it? Huh? Oh, uh, no, we need 10 minutes. I'm sorry. No, I'm for real. Let's just hurry up with this. Psalm 71. Watch this now. We got to be quick with it. I'll just read it fast. Verse 19. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who is high and lifted up? Okay, we're just going to be quick with it now. I'm going to skip over a few. You ready for it? Remember when I told you in John 7 you're supposed to judge you righteous judgment? Now you know what it means. You're supposed to judge through Christ. Oh, some of y'all didn't catch it? Wait, here's another one. Matthew chapter 5. I'm just paraphrasing. The Bible says, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now you understand it means to hunger and thirst after Christ. Very simple. Y'all ready for it? That's why Matthew 6 says, Seek you first the kingdom of heaven and... Okay. We're getting somewhere now, ain't we? Listen to this real quick. I'm, there's a lot you're going to have to wait for the video. I'm just keeping it real. But notice Isaiah 45, 21 says, There's no God besides me, a righteous God and Savior. Both titles of Jesus Christ. Figure that one out. Now, I do want to say this because this is where it gets really touching. Now, I know we didn't get to go over. There was other nuggets I'm not going to be able to give you out. You're just going to have to wait. But we have to read Isaiah 53. This is, this is heartbreaking. How, how amazingly loving the Lord is will break you. Y'all ready? Pay attention. I'm reading verse 12. It says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he had poured out his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors. He bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. He was the advocate. That's what it means to make intercession. He stood in the gap. This is Isaiah 53, the prophecy of the Messiah being wounded for our transgressions. Are y'all following this? But hold on, let's bring it all together. Oh man, I, I'm like a little disappointed. It was some really powerful things that I had to... It is what it is. You'll get it in the video. But this is what we'll wrap up with. How about that? So, Hebrews 7 verse 2 says he's the king of righteousness. Oh, come on. Talk to me. Yeah. Romans 1 17, the righteousness of God revealed. It's interesting. But this is what I wanted to talk to y'all about. Y'all ready for it? 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to show you this amazing mystery. And then we're going to pray with such joy and celebration. Amen. This conference went quick, y'all. Here we go. 1 Timothy 2. Let me read it. For the sake of time. Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man. Notice it says the man... Jesus Christ but we also know he's the Almighty it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God all things were made by him a regular man couldn't do that but what is so amazing about this oh come on y'all gotta talk to me wait a minute this is not even the last revelation but this is one of the final revelations as we're done as we're done you mind being an example come on over here my beloved brother Brother, come over here just for a moment. He's still on the throne, but he's playing another position right now because that's how amazing Jesus Christ is. Y'all ready for it? There is no hope between him who represents humanity 
and God the Father. There's absolutely no hope. And the problem is, is this flesh cannot be at peace. So what Jesus Christ does is so brilliant to bridge the gap. Oh, I can't do this. I gotta, I gotta leave, y'all. He becomes fully God and fully man. So the fully man arm holds him and the fully God arm holds him and he bridges them together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead, sit back up. But hold on, we got one more, we're done. I appreciate y'all patience. We'll get the baptisms done swiftly and joyfully. How amazing is that? It's that simple, people complicate it. Because they hate Christ, that's what it really is. They, want, they don't want him to get the glory. They don't want to lift him up as the Almighty. So they fight you with the word unlawfully. Listen to this and we're done. Remember it said one God and one mediator. That word mediator is messites. It is what it is. It says, listen, listen to how, listen how this will touch you. It's going to really hit you as we're leaving. One who intervenes between two to make or restore peace and friendship. Come on, that didn't hit you. Wasn't it worth the stomach pains and the waiting? Listen to how beautiful this is. Jesus is the mediator that restored your peace and friendship with the Father. I can't handle that. Oh Lord. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm-mm. Hold on. Oh, there's so much I didn't even get to tell y'all. I'm just looking at all these amazing revelations. Okay. So he restores the friendship and peace between us and God the Father, right? Well, isn't it interesting? I'm just going to read it. We're going to be quick because we're done. Isaiah 59. Watch this. Hold on. Isaiah 59. Verse 16. And he saw that there was no man. Oh, come on, y'all. This is so... If this don't break you. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. So there was no man that could be an intercessor. Right? But what if I told you, are y'all ready for it? That word intercessor in the Hebrew is paga. Guess what it means? I'm done after this. I, I, I'm going to have to do the rest on the video. This is going to absolutely amaze you. You ready for it? Intercessor in, in, in the Hebrew is called paga. And it literally means <laughs> to pray, to reach the mark, and to light upon. Wow. Jesus is the light of the world. He shined on those in the darkness to bring them to light for the Father to forgive them. He stood in the gap. He lit upon them. Like what? Thank you guys. Take these chairs. Thank you. Now hold on, I know there are some of you that may be saying, man of God, why did you just take me out of that conference room and bring me to your dinner table? Just give me a little bit of your time. I wanted to have a personal one-on-one -on -one with you. Has not this message literally changed your life? I know my life will never be the same. I love Christ so much more. See, this is the important thing about releasing these messages is that you learn more revelations about the Son of God. You obtain more knowledge 
of who he truly is and learn more details about him. I mean, how amazing is this? All these blasphemers online that try to say Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is not the Almighty God. They try to say he is not God Almighty or he's some lower level God simply because he's at the right hand of God the Father. But now you have the answer. It's so simple, isn't it, brothers and sisters? Sometimes the true answer is the one that's been in front of you the whole time. Imagine that. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm about to do the walk away. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is at the right hands of God the Father simply because we are still on this earth with free will and fall short of the glory of God. And because you and I need an advocate, we need someone because we need an intercessor to stand in the gap for us. Because without that, God the Father would utterly destroy us forever. So next time somebody tries to blaspheme and undermine the Messiah and try to say, well, obviously he's not the Lord God Almighty. Why do you think he's at the right hand of the Father? This does not make him underneath. This does not make him a lesser God. Remember, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That means he's equal with God the Father. What angel, what human being, what created being could ever be equal to God the Father? Brothers and sisters, I want you to just please be patient, okay? You'll go back to the conference room in, in a moment. And you'll do the prayer. And I pray that you help spread this amazing message. All glory to God. All glory to the king of the kitchen. The chef of all chefs. Amen. But I want you to think about this for a moment. For y'all that are partners and you have gone to the website and you have seen the messages that we have on our website that are not on YouTube. There was one in particular, one of my favorite called the altars of light and darkness. What an amazing message because it breaks down how Jesus Christ supernaturally is everything in the process of things pertaining to the Holy of Holies, whether it's the lamb offered up, he's the lamb of God or the high priest to offer up the lamb. He's the high priest. He's all of the things because if there is anything that is imperfect, everything falls apart. So he perfectly fulfilled all things. I can't get into that right now, but I wanted to use that same analogy pertaining to a courtroom per se. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is not only the great judge, but he's also our defense attorney. He's our advocate. You see, he's also the courtroom. He's the temple of the most high God. And it goes on and on and on and on. You see, so he has to fulfill all things perfectly. Remember, you can't think with an earthly mind. You have to think with a heavenly mind. And the only way to do that is to have the same mind that what? Come on, you, you should know the scripture that was in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Wow. Now, before we get into these life changing revelations, let's just do a quick recap, shall we? Think about this logically. Jesus Christ of Nazareth stands in the gap for you and I, day and night. And as human beings, as the sons of Adam, 
and the manifested sons of God roam the earth. You got those that are lost under the law. Blinded by the God of this world, the Bible says. And then you have the manifested sons of God that are born again. Who are no longer under the law of sin and death, but the law of the spirit, according to the book of Romans. And as I have let it be known, we still have to keep the commands of God. We're just simply not bound by the law anymore. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. And remember what we said during the main conference video you just watched. What does it mean to fulfill, to fill up, to satisfy? So God the Father is always well pleased with his son, Jesus Christ, the Almighty. He satisfied the Father when he fulfilled the law. No one has ever been able to do that and no one will ever be able to do that except for Jesus Christ. We can never do any of those things without him because he did it for us. Oh, this is amazing. I want to talk about something. In Galatians chapter 3, just real quick, I'll try to get you back to the conference video. Be patient, okay? I want you to go to Galatians chapter 3. Look at what it says in verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. You see? And if you remember earlier in this chapter, Paul was calling the Galatians foolish because someone had entered in the midst of them. And corrupted them with a doctrine of devil to bring them back to the law. You see, this is uh, very interesting. So breaking down verse 11, if no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, this means that it is impossible to please God by trying to follow the law because we can never fulfill it. Check this out. Even if you were to somehow, hypothetically speaking, fulfill the law, even if you were to, even if you were to obey the law perfectly from today moving forward until you're called to the judgment throne of God, do you know that technically you still fell short of his glory? Because before today, you sinned more times than you can count. Therefore, you could never perfectly fulfill the law. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, we about to do the walk away together. This really, it makes me love him even more. These are the, this is one of the many things that I love about the word of the Lord. When God releases these messages, it gives you more revelation of Christ, more knowledge of who he is. And ultimately, it makes you more grateful to have him and serve him. Amen. And to know him. Could you imagine? The only one that could perfectly fulfill the law is Jesus Christ, the Almighty, the Son of God. This is absolutely life-changing. And I wanted to take a moment to recap and talk about this briefly and show you these revelations that were not able to be preached during the conference because time ran out. We had a whole lot of baptisms to get done, okay? But everything happens for a reason, and I'm just grateful to give them to you now. Glory be to Christ. So, if no man is justified by the law, clearly God himself had to become flesh and dwell among us. In the beginning was the word. Come on. And the word was with God. And the word was God. It doesn't say a God. 
It doesn't say some type of God. God. And the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. So clearly it's talking about Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Almighty, right? But Ecclesiastes chapter 7, if we go there real quick. Hallelujah. Real quick. I'm not going to keep you too long now, hopefully. <laughs> I can't promise anything. Chapter 7, look what it says now. In verse 20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sin not. Do you hear that? There's not one. Go to Romans chapter 3. Real quick now, watch this. Wow. The Lord is so amazing. I hope you're really enjoying this message the way I am. I'm very humbled how our Heavenly Father favors this ministry. He's not a respecter of persons, but he can give favor to whom he chooses to. And because we truly love his son, he gives us grace and favor. You see? And I hope you're a part of that. Do you love the Lord? Are you in the fight with us? Because that blessing will overflow to you. And many of you already testify that after you have committed to following Christ and you have submitted yourself under proper authority and became a part of this ministry, the blessings of the Almighty, the blessings, the favor of God has been evidently multiplied in your life. Now, Christ gets the glory for that because without him, we are nothing. Oh, this is good. Read Romans chapter three with me. Let me get there. Look at what it says in verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. You see? So if there is none righteous, what does that really mean? Because clearly in the word of the Lord, there are certain people that were called just and righteous, right? I mean, go to Matthew chapter one. I'll, I'll give you maybe two or three examples. Matthew chapter one. Look what it says in verse 19. Referring to Joseph. It says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. And not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily. That word just is righteous, right? So before you think the word of God is contradicting itself, because it's not. Remember, it's precept upon precept. The word of God will always confirm the word of God. You understand? You need the Holy Spirit to help bring all these things together to open up your understanding to the scriptures. Are you following? I want to do another one. Go to Luke chapter 2. Watch this. Now Luke chapter 2. I want you to go. To verse 25. And behold there was a man in Jerusalem. Whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout. Are you seeing this? So clearly. If the word of God says there's none righteous, there's none that are just, clearly it's talking about something else because there are different levels of righteousness. You have men that can be righteous in a season, righteous in that they are seeking God, but not righteous to the point where they have earned their way into heaven. Are you following? They can be righteous and they can be called righteous, just like Joseph, just like Simeon. And there's others. However, that righteousness, that label of being just that was put upon them was not. And it could never be enough to escape the wrath of God, the judgment of God, and ultimately the lake of fire. You also have self-righteousness. These are the Pharisees, religious people that they make all of these laws for themselves to have a self-gratification as if they earn their way 
into heaven or earn the Father's respect without going through Jesus Christ, the righteous. Any other way, he said, you're a thief and a liar. Did he not, did he not say that? The only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. And we're going to end with such a life-changing revelation. Be patient, okay? I'm excited to give this to you as the servant of Jesus Christ. I'm here to serve you this amazing meal. Amen. So we're breaking this down now. We're starting to see the bigger picture, right? That no man is justified by the law. That there is none righteous. The Old Testament declares that as well as the New Testament, right? All fall short of his glory. We are like filthy rags before him. Now, if you have watched the other videos down below, you would know there is a difference between sinners and the saints of the Most High God. A sinner is somebody who practices sin. They live a life of sin. A saint of God may have been born in sin, but now they're born again under the law of the Spirit. They are following Jesus Christ, striving to live righteous, wearing Him as righteousness. And if they happen to make a mistake, if they happen to sin, the great advocate stands on their behalf and says, Father, forgive him. Father, forgive her. That is my servant. They have honored me. You see how amazing, you see how helpful, you see how awesome Christ truly is. But what is the difference in righteousness? I want you to go to Revelation, right? We're going to see this now. You remember the, this has been a track record that we have been doing for the past year, way before that. But the conferences that we have done led by Christ across the earth, thank God almighty. If you've noticed a pattern, we are revealing that through the mighty Holy Ghost, we are giving revelations of Jesus Christ. Notice that we talked about the throne of God, right? The right hand of God, right? Notice that we talked about how Jesus Christ has been exalted above the heavens, right? Notice that he is the glory of God. He is the wisdom of God. He is the power of God. And in these messages that we have released by the grace of God, we have shown without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the perfect word of God. He is the perfect glory of God. He is the living glory of God made flesh. He is the living righteousness of God made flesh. You see the difference? A man can commit a righteous act, but Jesus Christ is righteousness itself. He is the person righteousness. You see where I'm going with this? He is literally righteousness become flesh who dwelt among us. He is literally the word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. He is literally the light of God the Father who became flesh and dwelt among us. There are many lights. You have the light of the sun in the sky. There's a light from the moon. We are called the light of the world, but we are not the light. Jesus Christ is the living light of God the Father. So that same principle, that same truth applies with righteousness. He is the living righteousness. Not just righteousness, but perfect righteousness who became flesh and dwelt among us. So perfectly righteous, he was able to fulfill the law, which the law itself is righteous and holy. Yet he fulfilled the law, overcame the law, satisfied God the Father by completing the law perfectly for us. But here's the interesting thing. We were supposed to read Revelation 16. I'm so excited. I'm about to get ahead of myself. Go to Revelation 16. Hold on. Let's just read this real quick now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look at what it says now. Revelation 16, 5. It says, And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord. 
which are and was and shall be because thou has judged thus thou has judged thus you see so Jesus Christ clearly is not the same righteous as Joseph was called or Simeon etc or so on and so forth he is perfectly righteous there's a big difference how awesome is our God I want you to also write down Revelation 19 too you could read that on your own time where I want us to go right now is first Timothy chapter one are you enjoying this I see there's a reason why I want to bring you to the dinner table before you go back to the conference room video I wanted you to really understand this before the video ends. I wanted to take the time and make the sacrifice of time to do this. So that way it's really crystal clear for you. Amen. Amen. So watch this now. Where are we? I want you to go to Timothy. First Timothy chapter one. Watch this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So first Timothy chapter one. Verse 9. Watch what it says. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane murderers, and, and so on and so forth. My point is this. The law was not made for a righteous man, but yet there is not one that was righteous according to Ecclesiastes and Romans chapter three. So clearly this can only be talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua, the almighty, because he's the only one that can truly be called a righteous man to the point the law was never made for him. Think about it. It would be blasphemy to say anything other. It would be blasphemy to say otherwise. Why? Because the law was made for sinners, for the unholy, for the ungodly. And we know that when God Almighty became flesh and dwelt among us, he was perfectly holy, perfectly righteous. Wow. Wow perfectly perfect <laughs> right but here's the amazing revelation because the perfect righteousness of God the Father which is his son Jesus Christ he's not just the son of God brothers and sisters you have to get to know him so much more you have to desire the knowledge of Jesus Christ to know who he truly is. Wow. Because the perfect righteousness of God the Father decided to come to the earth. Because the perfect righteousness of God is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ the righteous. Why do you think it says in John, if anyone sin, a brother, those that serve the Lord, let them know that we have an advocate with the Father jesus christ the righteous it didn't say jesus christ that's it or it didn't say jesus christ the nice guy it specifically said jesus christ the righteous for a reason because it is the title righteousness that stands in the gap for you why jesus christ is able to cause us to be forgiven when we transgress the laws of god the father because he fulfilled the law, so therefore he overrides the law for us. Oh, come on. I hope you're seeing this. Listen, because he decided to save us, come to the earth, righteousness came to the earth and dwelt among us in bodily form. And because he fulfilled the law, it disqualified the enemy. You see? It says, if they would have knew who it was they were killing, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory, the Bible says. Because Jesus Christ was not under the law, you see? 
Jesus Christ was above the law, but yet he was born in flesh under the law. And because he did that, he completely fulfilled the law, satisfying God the Father, that we may be blessed through him because we can never make it out without him. We can never escape the wrath of God without him. We would never evade hellfire and ultimately the lake of fire without him. That's why it's so dangerous when some of y'all want to listen to false teachers online trying to yoke you back to these 600 and something laws got you changing your name and putting on a cape and you, you I'm telling you it's a bewitching it's a bewitching it's great to learn Hebrew it's great to know the names of the Lord in the original language it's great to want to obey the Lord's commands but you better know the difference and we have another message coming out that'll sort that out through the power of God Lord willing but be patient. You need to hear this. The law was not made for the righteous man. That's only talking about Jesus Christ. And because he voluntarily entered in and overcame the law. He made it where now he's above the law on our behalf. Wow. Wow. Now listen. I want you to go to Romans chapter 5. I want you to see this. This is absolutely life changing. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Moving forward. Look at what it says. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, how much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of what? Righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Are you seeing this now? See how it's opening up? Your understanding is opening up to the scriptures? That's one of the anointings that God the Father has so graciously given us, given us in this ministry. To help you, to serve you. That's, that's it. We just want to help you make it into heaven. To the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's it. We love Christ so much and we love you. Listen to this carefully. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Are you hearing this? So when Adam sinned, you see, we were under that curse. Now watch this. Even so, by the what? Righteousness of one who? Jesus Christ. The free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one's man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. How awesome is this? Think about this logically. You didn't choose to be born in sin. You were forced into sin because of what Adam and Eve did in the beginning. You see? The devil in his craftiness deceived, you see, and they became dead in sin. Not dead to sin, dead in sin. God said, you shall surely die. So when we were born, we were born under the law and cursed with the nature of sin. So by default, if Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God, the father, literally. Remember, Paul said that Christ is the literal wisdom of God and the literal power of God. And might I add, power means right hand. He's the right hand of God almighty, the power of God. Wow. If the literal righteousness of God, the father goes to the earth Born through the womb of a virgin, Mary, walks among us and overcomes the law by fulfilling it perfectly. We can now receive his righteousness by being born again. Because our first birth, our natural birth, we were born with the curse handed down by Adam and under the law. So now being born again, we are born with the blessing of Jesus Christ's righteousness, of his righteousness. How amazing is this?
I should have walked away already, but I'm trying to compose myself. Are you hearing this? No, nah, I need more. No problem. Let's keep reading. Look at what it says. Number uh, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin aboundeth, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you seeing it now? Oh, this is so good. Now I want you to go to Romans chapter 3. Just take a walk with me now. Verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin, you see? But now, the what? Righteousness of God. Who's that? Jesus Christ. Are you starting to see it now? I try, look it. That, this is exactly why the ministry is called Revelations of Jesus Christ. This is a name given directly from God the Father. There is a certain mission and calling upon our lives that you will see Jesus Christ in a deeper way. Now, when you start reading scriptures and you see words like glory, you'll think of the Messiah. When you see words like wisdom, you'll think of the Messiah. When you see words like righteousness or righteous, you're going to think of the Messiah, the almighty God. Look at what it says here. Come on. Where are we at now? But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Who was manifested? The word of God, the glory of God, the love of God, the peace of God. I, I'm, look, I better super glue myself to this chair because I want to do a walk away. Okay, this is so exciting. Wow. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no for there for there is no difference. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in who Christ Jesus. Are you following this? Let's keep going. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his what? Righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Are you seeing it now? Let's read one more verse. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. See, he is the justifier. Jesus Christ can decide to justify you or me. To justify you. You see, he's going to search you out to see your sincerity. That's what he's looking for. The man of God said in the, in, the, in the New Testament to all those that love our Lord in all sincerity. You see, a lot of people are missing that. They don't love Christ in sincerity. Wow. Wow. I want you to go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Watch this. Watch this. Hallelujah. Look at what it says now. Chapter 2, verse 20. For who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto what righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Oh, this is so good. Wow. And of course, you could parallel that to Isaiah 53. Read the whole chapter, but in particular, verse 11. That's what he's referring to, right? So notice that he mentions that it's by the righteousness of Christ. You have to understand how big of a deal this really is. Because remember, the law is not an enemy. The law is considered holy and righteous to God the Father. It's his standard of what we should do, how we should be, how we should obey him, how we should treat each other. 
It's what he expects because he is holy beyond our understanding. But yet, <laughs> someone more righteous than the very law he made. Oh, that's so heavy. <laughs> Think about what I'm saying. The Bible says from the heart, the mouth speaks. So anything I say to you has to come from within first. That is the origin of where it manifested from. Right? My mind and my heart. What I say to you started from within. If you have not seen the message called created from within, you are doing yourself a great disservice. You need to watch that message. My point is this. When God the Father declared the law to the wicked, to the unholy, to show them, it was a way to prepare mankind for his son, Jesus Christ, as the Savior. That through the years, many would try to obey the law. Many would try to follow the law. Many would try to serve the law and fail miserably. But his son, Jesus Christ, the Almighty, would come to the earth, manifest in the flesh and dwell among us. He would become flesh and dwell among us. We would be, we would, we beheld his glory. And the perfect righteousness of God the Father, but not just righteousness, the living righteousness of God the Father would fulfill the spoken, expected righteousness of God the Father. <laughs> Are you hearing this? The living righteousness of God the Father, who is Jesus Christ, chose to come to the earth for us. Because we could never make it. We would never satisfy God. We could never fulfill the law. So Jesus Christ says, I will go. I will fulfill the entire law. So listen to what I just said now. The living righteousness of God the Father, who is the Son of God, fulfilled the spoken righteousness of God the Father, which is the law. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. Remember, and we can't we can't get into it because I already broke the rule. I already broke the rule. I get it. I done kept you way too long at this dinner table. But hold on. I told you we got a grand finale coming up. Now for your patience, you're gonna get rewarded. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't worry, I'll rush you back to the to the conference room and I'll clean up your dinner plate, bring it to the sink. No problem. I'll tell the chef you appreciated the meal. <laughs> Are you ready? If you study the scripture, you will see why in every area he was tempted like us, but yet overcame everything. You will see why. I can't do it. I can't. We got to move forward, y'all. In James, I'm going to challenge you and I want you to answer this question. In chapter 5. How many times have you heard pastors say this verse, including probably you now, keep it real now. You know, we got it. What's one of the number one rules when you come to this dinner table? You got to keep it real. Okay. Love you. Love you. We love you. Come on, bring it in. Let's get a quick hug. Ah, fist bump of peace. Ah, we cool? We cool, right? Okay. Let's go to James. It's about to hit you now. So I had to make sure I hugged you before I, I hit you with this word. Because you, you about to see what I'm, what, what I'm talking about. Look at this now. Look at this. Watch this. I want you to go there. James chapter 5. What? Watch this. Chapter 5. Verse 16. Listen to what it says. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Listen, there's a period there. Then it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Wow. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Be honest. You know, honesty is key. 
When you read that scripture in the past or heard other preachers talk about it, 99.9% .9 of the time, who is that verse referred to according to Christians? Most would say themselves, right? They'd be like, oh yeah, I'm living righteous and my prayers will move mountains. Hallelujah. Now don't get me wrong. We're going to get to that part on why we are now righteous. But before that, how many of you have given the complete glory and credit to Jesus Christ? This is ultimately talking about Christ because listen, listen carefully. Now the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, but we already read in Ecclesiastes in Romans three, that there is none righteous. There is not a righteous man on the earth. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So this verse is actually pertaining ultimately to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That his prayers for us, he's always making intercession for us. Wow. And it goes deeper, you know, because there are certain prayers that he has done for us on our behalf that will eternally stand forever making intercession. The word of God does not come back void. So when he asks God the Father to forgive us, it is eternally done. He don't have to keep repeating himself. Once everything is established, once everything comes to an end, when he returns to the earth, when judge, when Satan is bound a thousand years, even after that, and everything is fulfilled. You know what? We're going to leave that alone. I want you to see how much Jesus Christ loves his father. I want you to write this down. You can read it on your own time. John chapter 17, verse 25. Jesus Christ calls God the Father, O righteous Father. You see? You see? He said, he said I and my Father are one. Remember, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Are you hearing this? This is interesting. I really didn't get to emphasize on this. I wanted to tap on it a little more. Go to, excuse me, I'm burping at the dinner table. Uh, go to Malachi chapter four. Okay, last book of the Old Testament. I want you to go to Malachi chapter four, just real quick. We're going to be wrapping this up. Okay, trust me, this is worth the wait. Some people complain about long messages. They love their fast food, but fast food will give someone a clogged artery. Fast messages have their moments, but you got to be able to also sit down and have a nice, beautiful steak dinner with some mashed potatoes, a side salad, you know, uh, uh, some, some Caesar salad, and just a nice, healthy meal with some asparagus. You got to be able to have a good, wholesome, spiritual dinner, okay? Take your time and enjoy this message. Listen to what it says now. This is very interesting. In chapter 4, verse 2, it says, For unto you that fear my name shall the son of what? Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Clearly, this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Son of righteousness. Wow. 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 Amazing. And you can read this on your own time. I did want to cover this part real quick. In Psalms 37, 25, it says, He'll never leave the righteous forsaken, nor begging for bread. Now, some might say, aha. Matthew chapter 27, Jesus Christ clearly says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right. And of course, Mark 15 as well. And they say, see, Jesus can't be the righteousness of God because he was forsaken. Was he, though? Was he? Because my Bible says that he was raised from the dead on the third day. You see. So in that moment, when all the judgment had to fall on Jesus Christ. So that way we could be saved. 
I can't really get too deep into that. That's for another message. But I just wanted you to have a greater understanding of what this truly means. Now, it's about to heat up. Are you ready? Go to Isaiah 59 real quick. We almost done now. We almost done. Hallelujah. Isaiah 59. And look, there may be some things that I'm just leaving out or I may not have covered. I want you to leave a comment in, in the comment section. If God gives you a revelation that has not been mentioned, uh, we really love y'all so much. We appreciate all your comments. And of course, we just can't respond to everybody. But trust, we read them and we are so grateful. You guys are just so appreciated. We love every single one of y'all that are standing by our side in this last day fight against the enemy, against the beast and his system. Wearing the whole armor of God. Speaking the armor of God. <laughs> Isaiah 59. Let's go. Look at what it says. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Go to verse 17 real quick. It says. For he put on righteousness as a what? Breastplate. And of course, when you parallel that, go to Ephesians. Come on, we got to be quick with it now. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 6. Let's go. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. You see that? Why is righteousness the breastplate? You have the heart, you have the lungs, both signify, listen to this carefully, the heart is where Christ seats himself. In you as the temple, his seat in the throne is your heart. We're not going to get into that. You should have already watched the other videos and you would be caught up to have an understanding rather than try to debate in the comment section because you lack, because some may lack understanding what I'm saying. So his heart, your heart is where he seats himself. And the lungs represent oxygen. And if you know anything about the parallel between oxygen you breathe and the Holy Spirit when it comes to the spiritual realm. So there's a reason why the breastplate of righteousness covers this whole area. Are you following? I, I, I'll leave it there. Meditate on that. And let me know if you come up with something even deeper. Amen. Because last time I checked, brothers and sisters that love Christ, we're in this together. Amen. Now, it's about to heat up. This one right here has literally changed my life. I want you to go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Are you enjoying this? Because I know I am. Romans chapter 8. You know, to those that are carnal, I'm just talking. They're like, man, this guy's talking. That's all. To those in the spirit, they're enjoying the meal. They're like, nah, keep coming. I need more of this. Keep talking. Come on. Don't rush out of this, man of God. I need to hear this. But to those that their mind is like a rock, they can't comprehend because of sin in their life, an antichrist spirit, they just think this is a waste of time. It's very sad. Pray for them. Those that are able to be saved. But Romans chapter 8. Look at what it says now, chapter 8, verse 34. It says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Did you hear that? But hold on a minute, I wrote this down. Now don't make fun of me if I mispronounce this Greek word. Antikahano. Antikahano is I think how it's pronounced. E-N-T-Y-G. It, it basically what it means. I may not always be able to pronounce the Greek or the Hebrew, but I can tell you what it means. A hey, hallelujah, amen. It means to light upon. Remember, we, we already talked about that at the conference. There's another Hebrew word that means the very same thing. 
But listen to what it says. I'm talking about the word intercession now. It means to go and meet a person for the purpose of interceding for them. To have a conversation, consultation, and supplication. Listen to what this means. This is so beautiful. And it should put a tear in your eye to know how much the Son of God truly loves you. And why he suffered for you. He literally, remember, it's a person that will go and meet with someone to bring peace between them and another person. So you have God the Father completely disconnected from all of us. The wrath is stored up for all of us. He's ready to destroy all of us because all of us, born in sin, could never satisfy his wrath. None of us could fulfill his law. Therefore, we deserve nothing but death and eternal punishment. So what Jesus Christ does is be a mediator and an intercessor for us by standing in between us and God the Father. This is why the mystery of godliness is so beyond the understanding of these so-called Pharisees and false teachers online. They can't comprehend how God on the throne and God could walk the earth at the same time as a man because God. God has to be the one to judge and God has to be the one to be the peacemaker. No one else qualifies. Oh, this is so amazing. <laughs> it's the same reason Jesus is the high priest and also the lamb. Uh, come on, y'all. I got to go. This is so amazing. So listen very carefully to go and meet a person for the purpose of conversation, consultation, supplication, to bring peace between two parties, between two people. So Jesus Christ literally leaves heaven, comes to the earth, and meets us to talk with us, to consult us on what we need to do, and supplicate, to, to have supplication on our behalf, To bring peace between us and God the Father. And how does he do it? By overcoming the law, fulfilling the law, and shedding his blood. Because through the blood of the Lamb, he has made peace between us and God the Father. Wow. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Are you ready for it? We got two more and then I'm, I'm going to send you back. You're going to go right back to the conference. You got that, okay? And we'll see you at the next dinner table, Lord willing. Are you ready for this? This one right here. These last two have absolutely changed my life. I want you to go to Proverbs 24. You ready for it? Let's go. Proverbs 24. This one right here. I'm telling you right now. You better be sitting down. If you ain't sitting down, try to sit down. Because your butt's going to sit down when you get hit with this revelation by God's grace. Proverbs. Let's go. 24. You there? All right, well, hold on. Wait for me. Proverbs 24 now. Watch this. Watch this. Look at what it says now in verse 16. You ready for it? For a just man, that means righteous, for a righteous man falls seven times and rises up again. Now, you might go, wait a minute, man of God. Jesus ain't never fell. He ain't never fell into sin. How many times you hear people use this verse in reference to making a mistake, falling into a sin? For many years, even I thought that was the main purpose of this verse to encourage us that if you fall, just get back up and keep going. And although there's truth to that, what if I told you that is not what this verse actually means? When I tell you this one right here. This one right here, this revelation you're about to see right here is probably going to make you want to do the walk away. What if I told you that word there for fall, the righteous fall seven times, but they get up again is the word Nepal, Nepal. It, listen carefully now. Listen carefully. To fall into the hands of. To fall a violent death. Wait, wait, hold. There's two more definitions, but let's just break those two down. At some point, 
wasn't Jesus Christ handed into the hands of wicked men? Yes or no? At some point, wasn't he violently murdered? Did they not beat him? Was he not wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities? Was he not brutally nailed to the tree? Okay, now you're starting to see it, right? Because I know there's some Pharisees in the back that was about to go, wait a minute. How could Jesus be the righteous if the righteous fall? Jesus never sinned. At least they're saying that right. He ain't never sinned. You got that one right. For the few hiding in the bushes in the back, spying out our liberty in Christ, need to repent. But for the most of y'all that are in the grace of God right now, you in the peace of God. And you have discernment. You already know who we are in Christ. You know we love the Lord. So we're at peace right now. You're starting to see what this really is. But are you ready for the last two? Get ready. The word Nepal also means. Wow. To be offered. I, to be offered. Was not our mighty Lord and Savior. Offered up as the Lamb of God. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. There's one more. Remember it's precept upon precept. And you need the Holy Spirit to show you. What definition. Lies upon what verse. You got to be able to lay it down properly. You see. I saved the best for last. Are you ready for it? The main one. Is. That word Nepal also means to prostrate oneself before. That means, see, back then, the ancients, when worshiping God Almighty, would lay completely down. Lay completely. They would, they would lay completely down, face down, flat. On the, they would literally lay on the ground in full submission to God Almighty. This means when it says the righteous fall seven times, but they get up again. It's not talking about falling in sin. It's talking about falling on the face in submission to God the Father. Is this not what Jesus Christ? I, I can't. I can't do this. Wow. Wow. Did not Jesus Christ fall down on the ground in complete submission to God the Father? Because to fulfill the complete law means to be in complete subjection to the law giver. And if he becomes flesh and dwells among us and is born under the law. Willfully, because the law was never made for him. He did that for you and I. Oh, come on. He would fall before the father and rise up. Remember in the garden of Gethsemane, he fell down prostrate. You see, he fell down in the fall and he bowed before God, the father. But when he knew he had to go on to the death, to obey even to the death of a cross, to carry that cross all the way up Golgotha, he got back up and went on with the mission. Come on, isn't that so good? Why do you think the verse? And what annoys me is so many of us don't finish that verse. Keep it real. Keep it real. Look at what it says now. The righteous man falls seven times and rise up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Notice that God deliberately uses the word fall for when it comes to the wicked. It's a different word. It's called kasal. It literally means to stumble, to bring to ruin and overthrow. So there's a complete different fall there. So we all need to stop saying when somebody falls into some sin. Oh, I fell, but the righteous get up. First off, you commit adultery. How you righteous? If a person living in nasty sin, they ain't righteous. Now. Now that we establish that amazing revelation that the son of God would continually bow down and lie prostrate before the father for us. Wow. 
Wow. Now, here's the grand finale. That one technically, in my opinion, is a grand finale. But this one is neck and neck. Are you ready for it? Before, I, before you go back to the conference video, are you ready for it? I want you to go to Genesis chapter 7 quickly. Genesis chapter 7. Watch what it says now. Chapter 7. Hallelujah. Wow, this is so amazing. This is so amazing. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. You are our righteousness. Look at what it says now. Chapter 7, Genesis, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come down in all thy house un into the ark, into the ark, for thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. So Noah qualified because God the Father seen righteousness. But can't you see that in Matthew chapter 25, the very same, there's a parallel because the five wise virgins filled with oil entered into the door. Just as Noah was called to enter in the ark, he had to go through the door and God the Father himself shut the door when they entered in. Notice, excuse me, notice that in Matthew chapter 25, when the, when the wise virgins entered in, the door shut bef um, after them, right? What am I saying? Man of God, what are you trying to say? Help me out. Oh, you didn't see it. Some of y'all, I hope some of y'all did. God the Father seen righteousness on Noah, and that's what qualified him to enter the ark. Go to Isaiah chapter 61. Are you ready for it? We're about to end here. Watch this. I'm going to show you what it is. That's okay. Let's just do it. Isaiah, come on. Let's go. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. Look at what it says now in verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with what? The garments of salvation. He hath covered me with what? The robe of righteousness. Wow. Wait a minute. The robe of righteousness? Are you, are you joking right now? Who is this robe of righteousness? Remember how Adam and Eve sinned and God had to cover them in animal skins? That means an animal was sacrificed. A lamb was sacrificed, I believe, in the very beginning of Genesis. And they were covered to hide their shame. If Jesus Christ is the eternal lamb of God, we put him on and wear his righteousness. Quick analogy. If somebody, let's say, is a police officer and they're, they're on traffic duty. As long as they have that uniform on, people will obey and stop their car when he blows that whistle and says, pull over, right? But imagine if he's got no clothing that represents anything to do with an officer. Imagine he just got regular street clothes on and he's like, stop. Ain't nobody listening to him. They're going to drive right by him. Why? Because he's not wearing his authority. Are you following? You need to watch the four limbs of power if you haven't seen that message. So when we put on Jesus Christ as our righteousness, are you ready for it? Go to Romans 13 quickly, quickly. Romans 13. Are you there? Let's go. Watch what it says. Thank you. Holy Ghost. Romans 13. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at what it says in verse 14. But put on, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Put on Jesus Christ. It's also mentioned in Galatians. Put on what? Jesus Christ, who is the robe of righteousness. And listen to this carefully. The same way God the Father, I'm getting ready to do the walk away. The same way God the Father seen righteousness upon Noah and that qualified him to escape the wrath to come. It's the same way you and I 
have to put on Jesus Christ as our righteousness. So when God the Father looks down on us, he sees the righteousness of Christ and we're allowed to enter in the spiritual ark to escape the wrath to come. I Come on. Wow. I get it. I get it. I, I said I was going to try hard not to do no walkaways. We're talking about the translation. The Bohan Natsal. The rapture, some call it. The harpazo. The catching away of the saints. The only way you being caught up out of here, unless it's God's will for you to die for his name. It's appointed for man once to die. After that, the judgment. You better have the righteousness of Christ on. And if you dare try to go back to that law, you literally take off his righteousness and say, I'll make my own jacket. I'll make my own robe and you will never satisfy God. In fact, you'll provoke him to anger. Now, rightly dividing the word, we have to figure out what does it mean then to obey his commands? He said, if you love me, keep my commands. Is there a difference? We'll have to find out. I got another message coming up. Lord willing. How amazing is this? Are you seeing now why I had to snatch you? Are you seeing why you needed to be snatched up out of that conference room and brought to this dinner table? Now, there's homework I want to give you. There's two things. If you could please write this down. Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 5 to about 9. I want you to meditate on that verse. And tell me who it's talking about. And secondly, and more importantly, and secondly, what if I told you that the Holy Spirit is also mentioned when it comes to the righteousness of God? I want you to do your homework on that because he deserves time from you. He deserves for you to make time to search him out. O oh, Emmanuel, God is with us. All right, that was amazing. What a beautiful one-on-one. -on -one. Would you say, I, let's give the glory to Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, I get it. All right, go ahead. We'll see you later. I get it. Go ahead. Go back to the conference room. We'll see you later by the grace of God. We love you all so much. Jesus Christ, the righteous, is the only way. Yes. Let's pray and let's say it together because we got to get baptisms done. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you that you are the righteousness of God the Father. Made flesh. Righteousness made, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Thank you, Father God. Lord, once again, keep your word in us. Don't let the enemy take it. We acknowledge, we declare, we decree that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. That's why the Bible says, no weapons formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment is condemned. Why? Because the Lord is our righteousness. Did you hear that? The Bible says to put on Christ the robe of righteousness. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, cover me, cover me in, your in your righteousness, not so I can sin and so disrespect, disrespect you at the right hand of the Father, at the right hand of the Father. but move in the fear of God, fear of God. Knowing, you're at the right knowing you're here at the right hand for me, for me. to stand in the gap. To be the mediator, to light upon me, when darkness tries to grip me, I receive you as my advocate, but Lord, as I walk in you, and as I wear you, as my righteousness, and thank the Father eternally, for you 
Also teach me your righteous ways. So that way, the more I walk with you, wearing you, I become more like you. And my character becomes more righteous. And I honor the Father by obeying his commands and lifting you up. You are the righteous one. You only wanted to serve the Father. Always on your mind. Always on your heart. To obey every command. To fulfill the law. A law that wasn't made for you. But you filled it up. And you satisfied the Father. I take upon that satisfaction. To be filled up with the fulfilling of the law. Through Christ, the Father is pleased when I wear His Son. To put on Christ, I am righteous because of the blood of the Lamb. I am righteous, not because of my own will, my own good deeds. I am righteous because I wear the righteousness of God. Lord, may I leave with a great blessing to take this fire and warn as many that you are on the door, you are at the door. You are here, Lord, getting ready to wipe out the wicked. Help me to warn the, the wicked, those that are savable. And help me, Lord, to be faithful to the end, never to take the abomination, never to bow to the beast system. Keep me in this last hour. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ha!